a quick question. Do you go to fabric stores on your vacation? I think that's one of the most, uh, mm, what's the word I'm looking for? Decadent thing I can do on a vacation. I mean, you can put me in a spa, you can put me on a mountain, but if I can uh, drop into a local fabric store and find something, uh, that's a real vacation for me. I'm Sean from Sewing and Vacuum Warehouse, and today we're going to show kind of a haul from my last vacation. I have been planning a trip to Argentina for a long time, and I knew it was gonna be one of these last minute things, and about two weeks ago, I got the go ahead to do it, uh, and it was just kind of a whirlwind trip down there. Now, not exactly whirlwind, because um, uh, the airlines canceled like three flights, and so I sat it in the airport for like a day and a half, but once we got there, it was, the trip was everything I thought it was going to be and more. Before I left, I wanted to find uh, some locations to do fabric shopping while I was there. I had the language barrier. I don't speak Spanish very well and my Spanish is kind of, um, you know, elemental at best. But I did find a really interesting looking shop uh, called Next Fabric. And I found out that it was in the fabric district of Buenos Aires. And I, you know, got all the information, I was ready to go. Now when I got there, I realized that this was not a fabric store, but a showroom. And not only was it a showroom for fabrics, but it was for very expensive fabrics. I was, uh, a little shocked. Even with the exchange rate, it was gonna come out to about $30, $35 for a meter. And this is what I got. I went through a couple uh, of tours to the shop and I ended up with this guy here. I like this for uh, bag making because you have the segmented square. So if I wanted to do a slip pocket, I could cut that out and put it on without it looking out of place. Uh, it's beautiful, beautiful fabric. It, uh, the detail and the, the weave of it is really beautiful. And then I found this guy. Now, it doesn't look really uh, impressive, probably on camera, and it really didn't look very impressive when I made my first pass by it. But if you could see this in person, it is a Berber fabric and it has a color that's kind of gray, uh, but it's really lush and I thought, I can put something, some leather with it, and uh, at that time I wasn't even sure. I was thinking vinyls, stuff I had at home, but it's just really, really soft, and I thought I could do some uh, something great with that. Now the shop where I got these, the showroom, uh, Luis uh, was the person that was handling uh, this order, and he told me I was gonna have to come back a couple days later to pick it up, because they had to get that from their uh, their warehouse. So I came back for this. Now, after I left that store, I went directly across the street to another location. Now these were 30 and $35 for a meter. Um, sounds like a lot. These are 50 inch wide uh, bolts. So there's quite a bit of fabric there, but still $65 for two meters of fabric. That's, that's a little rich for my blood. So I went across the street and um, found this guy. Now this is a cotton canvas. Uh, I really like the orange. I can do a lot of things with this. So this piece right here, uh, four meter for 50 inches wide, cost me uh, about four bucks. So it changed uh, depending on which shop I went to. It was not a showroom, it was a fabric store. I was able to get this. I got, um, some more here, I'm gonna cover, recover a bench at home, and so this orange really, really worked well. And then I went to a, a flea market in San Telmo. San Telmo is the oldest, um, it's the oldest neighborhood in Buenos Aires, and it has been in operation since uh, just shortly after the city was founded. It's beautiful, it was kind of uh, not really, a thing for a long time and a lot of YouTubers and tourists started publishing things on it and now if you go, it's, um, it's a little more expensive but it is actually amazing. In San Telmo during the week they have a couple little uh, flea markets that are inside in these beautiful, beautiful old warehouses. If you look up to the 
uh, the rafters, you have really ornate, beautiful metalwork that are just in the rafters, just in the uh, supporting structure. And now they've made uh, several shops and some restaurants, and you can find some nice things in there. But if you go on the weekend, on Saturday and Sunday, they have a flea market that extends over several blocks in on one street. It's just very long. And I kept seeing things like this. Now, this is just a really basic kind of... Uh, uh, almost kind of primitive uh, book cover, and uh, I thought it looked great. Uh, it was kind of interesting, but it was cheap. I mean, really, really cheap, and there goes my voice uh, changing again. <laughs> um, so it was really cheap, and I saw bags that were really cheap leather bags, and it wasn't, it wasn't me, it was uh, uh, my close friend that, who was from uh, Argentina, and he kind of had this light bulb moment of, you know, Argentina is the largest uh, beef consumer in the world per capita. So with that many cows for meat, you're going to have cows, you're going to have cow hides and leather and all of the stuff that goes with it. If you're a vegan, if you're a vegetarian, I totally get you. I, I'm not going to try to change your mind, uh, but I am going to be talking about leather here in a second. So I don't want to trigger anybody. Please uh, feel free to... Um, skip ahead or, uh, but I don't, I don't want you to, to feel blindsided. Anyway, uh, with that realization, we went back to the place we were staying and we started looking up uh, leather shops. And because it's an old city, a lot of these stores do not have websites. They just have names and uh, kind of some random, uh, I wouldn't even say sketchy, but it's not a bad place. You just don't want to get lost. Um, anyway, so we, Stumbled into this leather shop and wow, uh, I was absolutely blown away. Um, even with the exchange rate, the prices were really great. Um, the first thing I saw were these. If you are making bags and you're looking to add just a little bit of um, richness to the bag, you're gonna go with like a leather strap where you can use rivets to place them on. Um, just fantastic, I got some black, got some uh, browns, lots of leather straps. And then I found these scraps. Um, check this out. I mean, these are beautiful, beautiful leather pieces, just stunning. And these are uh, remnants. So you're going to have some uh, issues that you're gonna wanna cut around, which is great. But I mean, things like this are really going to end set nicely into a bag. So leather, we got some shiny stuff here. Um, just beautiful. Uh, some textured stuff, um, different colors. Now I went through and I picked up, got some black patent leathers, uh, some beautiful snakeskin look. Um, and then going from there, we got purple, we got more black, we got some beautiful tans, um, more black, more black, uh, we got some brown, some green, and then it, it occurred to us that um, uh, maybe got to hide. Uh, I never thought, uh, I haven't sewn long enough on a machine strong enough to go through this type of material, so it wasn't something I always thought about, but uh, I thought about it then. Um, and this is where it led me. Uh, beautiful, beautiful black. It is, uh, has a great texture to it. It has a really great drape to it. So uh, I could do something that could be a lining fabric or an exterior fabric that uh, has a lot of slouch to it. And I like a bag that is kind of slouchy. I'm not real doesn't have to be structured for me. I like things that are going to relax into the person that's using them. So black and uh, uh, brown. And when you get up here and you see this, this has this really nice, almost like this pebbled uh, reptile look. It's very consistent pattern. But again, look at the drape of this. This is just... This is fantastic. And I know you can't do that, you can't uh, smell this, but man, I'm not gonna embarrass myself and just like, you know, do this big old, but yeah, there was, I was taking a lot of really big uh, gulps of, you know, 
leather smell in while I was doing this. And that's not it. And we, uh, this is the first one I bought. And then the two I just showed you were ones that I came back a couple days later and, uh, and uh, purchased. But this one has a, a beautiful floral print that's on it that happens to be also, um, you know, has a really great look to it. In the past, uh, the only leather that I really worked with were going to be things like accent pieces for straps. Um, you know, I use these with my rivet press, they look really great, but I hadn't done the whole thing in leather. So it's something that I'm gonna be learning. And I'm curious what you would like to see me sew with, this th with these things. With a machine like an HD9, the Genome HD9, I can pretty much sew all of this with really my machine not even struggling. So I'm curious what you think I should sew with these. Now you're gonna see some of this in some upcoming videos, but I would really like to uh, uh, take your comments below. So below, let me know what you think uh, I should sew and how to work with this. And, uh, but wait, there's more. Uh, when you have a culture of leather like this, you are going to have a culture of hardware, accessories, all things like that. Now, what happened was I went back to pick up a couple of these the very last day. And I didn't think I was going to get to go back here, back here, back here. Um, man, my voice is changing. This is, wow, I'm becoming a man. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to take a bit of coffee. I'm getting that kind of... Uh, uh, return from uh, vacation kind of grunge in my throat. So if it sounds a little squeaky, well, it always sounds squeaky. It always sounds squeaky. So never mind. It's just an excuse to have a swig of coffee. But wait, there's more. Um, the last day when I went back, this was the first hide I got, which man, I love, I still love. These two uh, came on that last day and I was not really feeling it, I was tired, I was hungry, and uh, or hangry, and I wanted to kind of get in and out of there, and um, my friend was like, hey, look over there, and tell me what you see, and I saw some color in the window, I didn't really realize what it was, and he's the one who convinced me to go over, he's like, just take a look at it, We're, you're here for a short time, go take a look. Uh, what I found was a store of all the accessories, the hardware, strapping, webbing, all of that. I didn't have time to go through all the um, hardware. I, I wish I did. Uh, I will on my next trip, but I found these. Now these are webbing that I use for a lot of the bags. So I've got colorful, I've got, uh, I got some roses and skulls, Marilyn Monroe, Andy Warhol, some uh, Dias de los Muertos, is that it? I'm, like I said, my Spanish is not all that great. And then some other colors, you know, some blues, some browns, grays, and something that is, yeah, that's kind of vintage 1970s OP. You know what that, you wouldn't know what that is. OP, yeah, it's a, I don't think anyone remembers OP. Um, anyway, so I wanted to just, uh, share this with you. It was an absolute amazing trip. Um, the haul here, it was the first time I've ever done a haul video, but uh, th this, you know, fortunately I took a bunch of stuff down, unloaded it for people there, and then I had all this uh, uh, luggage room uh, to put stuff in. And, um, man, I'm not done. I can't wait to go back. But between now and then, um, I'm gonna be making a lot of really cool stuff. So again, in the comments, let me know what you think I should uh, sew, what you, how you think I should use this. Um, let me know which ones were your favorite. And if you like stuff like this, uh, leave us a comment. Also subscribe and um, do that notification bell so you'll know that we put out stuff every week and we wanna keep doing this stuff for you. And I want to say that just recently, um, as of yesterday, uh, we're really starting to see things. Um, you know, we had someone come in for an HD9 because I saw our videos. And uh, so let me know what you think we should do with this. Also consider uh, coming by. Let us uh, show you a machine. Let us demo a machine if you're not in the area. Uh, we can do it over Zoom. Uh, Zoom. We can do it over Zoom. That's just like Zoom, but uh, an actual thing. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's real. And uh, yeah, so um, 
Yeah, I'm Sean from Sewing and Vacuum Warehouse. And always remember, when you're at the sewing table, there is room for everybody. I'll see you next time.